Hi guys, it's Avon and today I'm back with another video. And before I begin, I must point out that some of you may have noticed that I've cut my beard. I don't know if you could even call it a beard, but you know, it really just feels weird looking at myself in the camera and realizing that I used to look a lot different. Um, I don't think it's going to really grow, it's just going to take like, I don't know, two months. The last time I cut it, that was two months ago, and it grew this much. I actually grew a lot this time, and it was getting a bit, you know, it was getting itchy, and I was just getting irritated, by it, so I decided to cut it, but you know, not to worry, I just kind of like it now, looking at myself in the camera. Now, today's topic is going to be a compilation of the greatest extinction events in our natural history. This is a very interesting topic, and it's going to be a bit of a long one. Again, this video is inspired by Celtic Singularity. Please, to take it out. I'm going, I was actually considering talking to the devs of the game. I mean, I'm on their Discord server, and I actually know one of the one of the devs. I've, you know, contacted them sometimes, and I have some of an, a bit of an understanding with them. Like, I remember one time I searched a new feature for the game. It was like, I think, gorillas. And yeah, they added them to the game in the end. And you know, I think because of that, I really just have a nice standing there but you know i'm gonna think about talking to devs about actually trying to get myself trying to make myself a sponsor for this whole game and all but you know that's the story for another time if that goes well anyways let's begin with today's topic so what is extinction extinction is when a species is lost forever and to trace back the first extinction you have to trace back the first species but even before the first species let's talk about the younger earth the young Earth was a planet of extremes, where the temperature would go all, would either drip, dip extremely low or rise extremely high, creating either fireball, fireball Earths or extremely hot volcano Earths. But even in this, even in this <coughs> uninhabitable, quote unquote uninhabitable atmosphere, some creatures still must manage to survive. For example, slime mass, slime molds of cyanobacteria evolved, and these slime molds eventually gave rise to the atmosphere that we survive in nowadays moving on let's start with the largest universal common ancestor Wuka. Wuka which is a 3.5 billion years ago and all living things and everything living today everything that even that's even gone extinct every living creature and every major lineage has the name of Wuka inside of it it's this Wuka whose DNA still runs between us and as such is the common ancestor and the universal common ancestor of everything that lives on the earth right now anyways moving on we have a whole way of creatures that actually thrived in the early stages of the earth and in the early parts of the grand story of life first of all we obviously have trilobites trilobites were early successful creatures that lived until 270 million years ago these creatures had a very small compact design and resembled some form of strange aquatic cockroach. But even then, they actually managed to sustainably survive and keep the numbers at such a keep the numbers such that they managed to actually survive all the way until 270 million years ago during the Triassic extinction event. And trial bites were actually one of the many creatures that evolved during the Cambrian explosion which was a sort of wave time when many new body plants evolved and due to all the huge variety of new creatures that evolved, plenty of Ediacaran life was extinguished and outcompeted. And this actually happened in the Mesozoan era. Mesozoan life or multicellular life first began 450 million years ago. And it was around this time that the first primitive coral reefs also evolved and some jawless fish also evolved. But the success of the Mesozoan creatures was short-lived because con the continental collision was very frequent in during this time, which caused the rise of sulfur volcanoes. These sulfur volcanoes actually caused you know, an influx of sulfur to be released into the air. And this air then became toxic. And this also had a lot of other implications for the oceans as well, where most life lived at this point. Actually, all life, because Mesozoan life first began in the seas. And because there were a lot of other things that also happened in this time. For example, asteroid bombardment from the asteroid belt, which was also newly formed at this time. A lot of mm, huge collisions occurred in the asteroid belt, and fragments of those asteroids there 
actually broke down and tried to crash land on Earth, causing a huge, massive problem and a huge predicament for any early life. Eventually, the decomposition of calcium carbonate shells, which the creatures used in this carbon-rich atmosphere, caused a carbon tipping point to evolve where carbon was you know, actually being let out too much into the atmosphere because the atmosphere wasn't actually that powerful anymore, so most of the excess carbon generated was just thrown out of the Earth's atmosphere into this into space, which caused a huge dip in temperature, causing an ice age. And besides the due to the influx of sulfur, oceans also became anoxic, which means that they were oxygen poor. And this caused a huge Ordovician extinction, which killed 88% of the species there, and it took 5 million years for the Earth to recover. So here we have our first of about six major extinction events. This first extinction event is actually pretty huge and the extinction events are going to get bigger for now but later on you'll see that extinction can happen in many ways through many strange means. Anyways, after this the Devonian period began. The Devonian period was also known as the Age of Fishes because in this period, I'm sorry, about 360 million years ago, plastoderms or armored fish actually evolved. These armored fish has includes stuff like Dunkleosteus and other great, sp great examples of species of this kind. These fish and the Devonian period actually did have some creatures surviving in it that were descended from creatures that evolved these new bloody plants in the Cambrian explosion. For example, tentacles, claws, pincers, primitive eyes, things like that. They all evolved in the Cambrian explosion. Uh, and actually the Cambrian explosion is something very interesting that I'm going to be uncovering again and I'm going to be making a video about it next week too. I already have an idea to decipher, I'm going to tell you about that later. Anyways, another interesting thing about the Devonian period was that a land grab occurred at this point. You see, insects evolved flight and tetrapods arise. Now tetrapod literally means four foot. Tetra meaning four and pod is a plural in the European root. Uh, I actually talked about that before as well when I talked about the actually similarities between Sanskrit, Sanskrit, Kashmir, and Russian, which was largely placed on my own inference and research. But you know, I'm going to think of making a new video on that as well, maybe someday. I'm actually thinking about revamping this channel after some time because now I have a lot of time on my hands. The more time I get, that's the better because that way I can make. No good high quality videos. Maybe I'm even thinking about redecorating my room, you know, creating one of those whole cool recording studios, you know, like how gamers have their own special recording rooms and think about making something like that. So that I can get a better you know viewership, I can get better like stuff and I'm gonna do a lot more. I promise that. Anyways, I'm getting off topic so I'll continue with my topic and the reason insects actually evolved flight is also something I discussed in my previous video last week where I mentioned that as plants needed or to disperse their pollen, the first gymnosperms actually had clouds of pollen that they dispersed and these massive clouds of pollen were fed upon by insects who evolved flight in order to take advantage of this and viewed it as a food source. And this also brings me back to killer trees. The trees evolved at this point that actually had the ability to draw nutrients from the ground with their roots. These were the first trees that had actual roots and trunk before, because before this it was stuff like moss and stuff like that. The few landmasses of earth were actually covered by moss in the few, in a few million years, in the early, like early few couple of billion years where life was still very simple. Anyways, now these trees could drain nutrients from the ground and they do, did it too much, which caused eutrophication. Eutrophication allowed the growth of killer plankton. Killer plankton sensed that the least nutrients went into the water, and these, and this is known as eutrophication. Eutrophication involves algae, but I think plankton is also considered like plankton multiplied due to eutrophication. I think that's also considered eutrophication. I mean, because the nutrients are still going to be released, and due to this eutrophication, as I may call it, there was overgrowth, and this overgrowth cause for the death of multiple parts of the ocean floor and there were dead zones designated in, at this time. 
Along with this unstable climate also developed as a direct byproduct of all this eutrophication and the loss of actual sustainability of the environment due to this overgrowth of plankton, which was actually a major part of this. And again, carbon ran amok and carbon and this carbon tipping point was once again reached, causing the Devonian extinction where all these creatures just suffocated to their deaths. The Devonian extinction lost 87% of the species of that time and this time there was a huge recovery time about a hundred million years which is massive anyways next of all we have pangean life now pangea was a supercontinent which was created 250 million years ago approximately and this supercontinent follows the first synapses these synapses dominate here and synapses are actually the ancestors of most major cre creature families today, for example, reptiles, birds, and mammals are all descended from synapsids. And synapsids have a couple of major examples in them. First of all, we have Dimetrodon. Dimetrodon seems at first glance like a lizard, but in reality, it's related to mammals as well. And it's considered a mammal ancestor because some scientists state that these creatures were the first to evolve lactation or breastfeeding. Anyway, that's another topic for another video, and I'm going to be continuing a lot of these topics. I love it when I talk about a single thing and then I get hundreds of new ideas because of it. This is just lovely. And today I have a very long script, so it's going to be a very enjoyable video. Anyways, during this time there were mega volcanoes. These mega volcanoes were the size of Europe, and it, this there was this one particular volcano that was actually the size of Europe. It's a particular volcano called the Siberian Trap. And it was because of this Siberian trap that toxic ash was released into the atmosphere and carbon deposits that had accumulated during the past couple of million years due to carbonization of the calcium carbonate shells, as I first mentioned, all burned, causing a scorching earth where temperatures rose and there was again an influx of sulfur in the atmosphere causing acid rain. Actually, it was hydrogen sulfide, which is a compound of sulfur which was created by the bacteria through chemosynthesis. This also resulted in the destruction of the ozone layer and caused the Pangean extinction, which was the biggest extinction event in history, where 97% of life was lost and trilobites completely died out at this point. This was such a massive extinction that even some hardy survivors and the most resilient creatures we know of, or we knew of, the trilobites, even they died because of the severity of this extinction event. But life goes on and life finds a way. So after some time, life recovered once again in the form of archosaurs. Archosaurs were a sort of baseline theropods and reptiles, and they evolved into crocodilians and dinosaurs. The therapsids were the were actually a group of archosaurs which evolved into dinosaurs, and crocodilian species diversified at this point. Right now, we're talking about the Triassic period, which is the first of the three periods in which dinosaurs rule the Earth. During the Triassic period, many crocodilian species were found. For example, these actually didn't resemble modern crocodiles because they were known as running crocodiles, which were li literally just crocodiles, but they had legs to run extremely fast and occupy the niche that cheetahs do nowadays. Anyways, that's another topic for another video. Today I'm just going to be trying to talk about the extinction of these creatures and not go too much into detail on what these creatures actually were. Now, the Pangean Rift opened at this point, causing more carbon to be released into the atmosphere. And again, like the previous time, like the previous Pangean extinction, a lot of the life of this period died out again. About 84% this time, which was not as severe, but only one lineage of the crocodilians, the crocodilomorphs, and some archosaurs survived. Now, the crocodilomorphs are the crocodile species that evolved in, into what we have today as crocodiles, for example, alligators and the like. Anyways, after this, we have the age of dinosaurs, which began from the Jurassic period in which dinosaurs thrived. And it was in this period that the current ecosystems actually started to flesh itself out. By the end of the dinosaur period, I mean the Cretaceous period, which was the Cretaceous period actually, flowering plants had evolved and the first mammals had also evolved. And it was because of this that all of our current 
the I thought it basically the current geography of our planet was first fleshed out in this period, as I wanted to say. But we all know what happened to dinosaurs. An asteroid collision occurred this time, due to which the sky turned dark due to no photosynthesis, due to an excess of ash. It starved off anything that lived. This is actually very sad. I'm going to explain it in extreme detail right now. Imagine an asteroid hits the Earth. Once it hits the Earth, it's going to actually release a lot of ash into the air. The asteroid itself isn't as deadly as the byproducts of it are. You see, in the asteroid, once it collided, it released a lot of ash. This ash actually prevented photosynthesis from happening because it dark blackened out the sun, and days became dark. What actually happened because of this is that so there's no photosynthesis possible, most plant life is going to die. Now, this plant life was fed upon by the herbivorous dinosaurs, and these dinosaurs also die as a byproduct. And since these dinosaurs died, the carnivorous dinosaurs which fed upon them also died, meaning that only some scavenger species survive, but even they eventually die out because they can't actually find enough food. But even in this, the surviving scavengers and some species of small creatures that were built to only live on small amounts of food and which remained secluded for most of their life, such as the small mammal-like creatures that evolved at this point, and some primitive protobirds like Archaeopteryx evolved into birds, and the mammals of this period became the mammals that we had in the Cenozoic era, which happened after this, during the 66 million years ago, during which mammals diversified into a huge array of new creatures. This is again another topic for another video. I'm just so happy that today, today's video can be divided into at least two hours worth of videos, each with a lot of fleshed out points, explaining some, everything in such detail that I could not have to be making another video on a completely different topic. Everything could have been divided from this for the next two months. Imagine that. Of course, I am going to take this opportunity, but for that, I'm going to need a lot of time, and I need, I'm getting a lot of time on my hands nowadays, but I want to invest that in good stuff, and this is one of those things, so I really want to just make this channel a lot better, and I want to actually expand this channel as much as I can. Originally, I wanted to do this thing to gain traction, where I'd say that when I reach 30 subscribers, I'll cut my beard, but I did before that. Anyways, now, the thermal maximum occurred at this point. This thermal maximum was when the volcanic rise of the Himalayas occurred 56 million years ago, due to which there was a maximum temperature that was achieved, and this temperature is actually still kind of around today, and due to it, whatever creatures couldn't survive this extreme heat, and she died, and what creatures could adapt to actually live in this comfortably. But even after this 5 million, actually 2.4 million years ago, an ice age began. This ice age was really actually really close to when humanity first evolved. Humanity actually had evolved at some place. For example, 2.4 million years ago, I'll tell you the Homo erectus had evolved. Homo erectus was one of the first primitive men. Homo erectus means primitive and upright man, which means that these humans were so undeveloped that they could do nothing but manipulate fire, make basic tools, and they could stand upright. That's about it. And that's their entire job resume. Anyways, in this period, megafauna evolved. Well, megafauna are basically the giant versions of the mammals we have today. We have woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, and stuff like that. But after this, we have the modern period, the Anthropocene, the period of human impact. This period that we're currently living in right now, 2023. We face more extinction threats now than we've ever had, and we're all responsible for it. There are at least five threats that the game itself highlighted. The first one would be global warming, as we all expected, again causing carbon tipping point like before, but this time not because of the decomposition of calcium carbonate or something like, or the reignition of calcium or carbon deposits, but rather as a byproduct of global warming and all the carbon fuels and fossil fuels we consume. Then we have dead oceans. Overfishing and pollution, which is another waste byproduct of global warming, could kill the oceans on which all of our life is dependent. I've also covered the oceans in a previous video. This is crazy. Everything I've covered in previous videos is somehow coming here in a way, one way or the other. 
I mentioned how there's a nutrition cycle that's entirely dependent on the oceans and that was actually the first video I made related to salty singularity. I only have three more videos left with this game but I really love this game because it taught me a lot of cool things. Anyways, another thing that can happen is World War 3. Well, not exactly World War 3 but rather nuclear winner. A nuclear winner would be through human intervention where a nuclear war would cause a lot of nuclear ash to fall and it would just change the climate of the earth to the point where a lot of life could die out. Then we have another thing, but this one extremely highly unlikely is the asteroid. Another asteroid collision could kill everyone, but we are already ready for that. Or so we think. I mean, if there was an asteroid eminent, we'd have detected it by now because we have, we have a lot of advanced technology when it comes to astronomy again another topic i've discussed this is crazy everything i've talked about is coming in this one video today now like i said we have the james webb telescope we have stuff like that we can just detect these things in no time and we'd be prepared for that or so we think again because we could die because of our unpreparedness and what can i say our sort of overconfidence that we can do it but there's one thing that we're never prepared for and something that would instantly kill everything on Earth. Galactic threats. And by this, no, I don't mean aliens, although aliens could also kill us. That's a wild point, but that's highly unlikely. Because of the zoo hypothesis, which is something I'm also going to be explaining in the future. But what rather it's, I want to say gamma waves. Gamma waves or other types of cosmic waves which resonate through the universe are extremely deadly to life and could kill and incinerate everything on Earth in a split second could have happened right now and we couldn't even have noticed it just think about that anyways this could be everything that caused the anthropocene extinction in which who knows how many species die out forever and maybe all life on earth dies out except who's going to inherit the earth after that could it be passed to insects you see insects have rapid adaptation and reproduction and they've survived all this time Ever since the Devonian period, when they first stepped onto land just to evolve wings to eat some pollen. Ever since then, they diversified into millions of different life forms just in order to increase and maximize the chance of survival. So maybe it could be insects, most specifically a species such as cockroaches that would inherit the earth. But no matter how much we do, the solar apocalypse is always imminent. Earth would become inhabitable within as low as 700 million years from now due to the growth of the sun and the expansion of the sun. And because of that, we can't outlive our own planet no matter how hard we try. Except there's a loophole, the space loophole. If we colonize another planet to outlast our home planet, then we can outlast the life expectancy of the planet itself and increase our own life expectancy and even outlast the life expectancy for its own star by going to another solar system and we can even increase that even more by colonizing the entire galaxy or maybe the entire universe but that's highly unlikely once again because the universe is infinitely expanding but this raises the question is there life beyond earth are there life and is there life and are there habitable worlds outside earth well that's a question for you to ponder and something that the draken equation come where the draken equation comes into mind and that's what my video is going to be for the next week. The Drake Equation and Extraterrestrial Life. And with that, I conclude this extremely long bit on the extinction of life. Now, this was a great video to make. I really enjoyed making this video. The script for this video was probably the longest I've ever made. And I realized that the script for this video is literally just made of stuff that I've done before. Anyways, thank you for watching until the end. Have a nice day. Be sure to like and subscribe. I want to get as many subscribers as possible so I can eventually increase the quality of my content. I'm going to try to do as much as I can for that. Thank you and goodbye.